City strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barn green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, welcome back. So I am going to be doing a project today that I have been putting off for quite some time. And it is this jacket. Okay, so when I first got this pattern, I thought that it was a quilted jacket sure looks like it doesn't it well it's not it's lined but it's not quilted and i've been putting it off because i've been trying to come up with ways to turn it into a quilted jacket and i'm finally i'm just not i want to get it made um i've talked about it on my group a long time ago i want to get it made but i'm not going to be quilting it i'm just going to pretty much be making it the way the instructions say so as you can see, um, I'm going to be probably making this one. It's slightly shorter than this one because mine's going to end up being more of a cozy jacket because they all look cozy to me, you know, something just soft and cozy, not super thermal, not super defined, not business-like at all, just cozy. So I am going to use a combination of fabrics. I have this one that I have fat yard of it with sewing stuff. It's how to make buttonhole kind of print. I thought that might be fun. I'm also going to be using a bunch of floral flannel. Okay, just a very cozy flannel. And I'm going to be using some black to trim things with and define edges. And I have some pink lightweight broadcloth that I'm going to be using more for lining and we'll see as we get into it if I need to use any of that for the outside. So um, I have pre-washed all of my fabric. Most of it's 100% cotton. I don't think the broadcloth is, but I pre-washed it anyway. Hot water, pre-dried it in a hot uh, dryer to get all the shrinking and everything else out of it. And now I think I'm ready to go ahead and get started cutting out my pattern. All right, so I've got my pattern instructions there. There's my light on. And I'm going to use all of the pieces. Basically, you know, the two jackets, they're the same thing. One's just slightly shorter. So you're going to use all of your pieces. But they have it broken up for the different fabrics. Um, so like... Over here, we have one of the contrast fabrics. They want you to use these pieces like that. In another contrast, they want you to use these pieces. So looking at it this way, because my fabric is um, very different sizes, the little buttonhole print is the smallest one. I want to get the most bang for my buck out of it and everything. So actually, as I was starting to cut it out, I decided I'm going to go up a size. I'm going to cut out size 18 because for a jacket, you want to have a little extra room in there. And this is already designed so that, you know, the shoulders are not fitted. They hang down off the side. So I'm not worrying about getting a perfect fit right up here. So I think that's going to work going up one size for this jacket. All right, I got my pieces cut out. Lots of pieces. There are 14 pieces that you need to use for this and you need all of them. Um, but there's a few things in the cutout. I haven't, I just got my pattern cut out. I haven't cut out my fabric yet. And you really are gonna need to pay attention to your layout. On the uh, layout diagrams, if it's white, that means that your pattern is placed face up with the print face up, okay? If it has these little dots on it, you can 
see like um, here on the sleeve here you can see it has little dots on it that means that that piece needs to be placed face down if you have one-sided print and two of my fabrics um, my flannel with the flowers and my little buttonhole one here there's a one-sided print the back side you know is very different from the front side all right so to make sure like for this sleeve piece I'm cutting four of them out I'm going to be cutting out two of my lining which is my pink broadcloth okay but of what they call fabric okay fabric in their lingo is everything on the diagram that is white okay they are calling this fabric okay i'm going to call this section here fabric okay i don't know why i'm using this pen then so like on out of what I'm going to do for my fabric um, my sleeve piece will be cut with the pattern upside down and the facing piece will be upside down also okay you can see those little dots there then they have contrast one all right contrast one is the other sleeve so on there let me find a color here on their little diagrams this this well this is the back side of that same sleeve here um, this is all contrast one this part here on the back is also contrast one okay contrast one is what I'm marking in red, all right? Contrast one are these three pieces, the sleeve, this part of the front, and that part of the back, okay? And then we're gonna have, um, I, I used to have a bunch of colored pencils up here. I need to go find them again. This is contrast one up here, just with a different width of fabric. This is a 60 inch width, this is a 45 inch. The next one is contrast two. Contrast two is a smaller amount of fabric. All it has is piece number two, a welt, and a pocket. Okay, so this thing that they are calling contrast two is the dark piece. So I'm going to put C2. Okay, so it's basically just that one piece the welt and the pocket piece that goes there now these pockets they're going to have you cut them out of all different kinds of things so i'm cutting it out of this one here out of this one here and then on the back of this paper we have the lining layouts okay now i'm going to be trying to cut all of my lining out of my pink broadcloth so hopefully that's not going to be a big issue this is going to be pretty standard here okay oh and the sleeve they incorporate a lot of ease into that sleeve so i'm not going to be worrying about you know having to make any pattern modifications there there's no darts in this so i'm not going to have to move any darts for a bust adjustment or anything the only thing i'm doing is because i'm doing a shorter version all of these pieces here that have a bottom part i'm just going to take that whole bottom part off of those four pieces okay of the facing the lining front and back and over here um oh and this up here and this over here okay so there's one two three four five six seven pieces i need to cut the bottoms off of and then worry about all of this but i just wanted to point out to be really really careful uh, when you see something with the little dots that means that pattern piece is upside down when it's white that means the pattern piece is right side up so the other thing is i was going to use my smallest piece for this which is my black and i'm not too sure i might need to uh, pre-wash some more of my black flannel i have a whole bolt of it so that's not a big deal 
but if I uh, don't have enough in that little piece that I have left over, I'll, I'll pre-wash some more. But this is going to be black, so I'm going to write that. Okay, this one here is going to be my buttons, my buttonhole print. And this one here is going to be pink floral. Okay, so that's all my cheat sheet. Let me go ahead and get started getting all this cut out. Okay, I am cutting out my lower front left from my contrast here. And I want to show you one thing. My print is not actually printed 100% on the square. It's slightly, slightly off. So actually, if I was going just by the instructions, I would be, here's my selvage, I would be laying it this way. But because my print is mostly going this direction, I'm going to turn my piece this way. But if I line up the bottom of this exactly where my selvage is, you would think that it would be straight, but it's not. And I can tell because here is my grain line, which is kind of going wonky here. Here is my welt line here, which is going a little wonky. So I'm just going to square it up with the design underneath it so that according to the design it's straight okay i think that that's more important especially where this welt pocket is because that's going to be a really big directional line that i'm going to be sewing into it and if that is like this that would drive me nuts it would really stick out so just wanted to point that out to lining it up so that my grain line is in line with the design that is printed. Just while I'm doing this, having a little chat, what this pattern basically is, is they've color blocked the outside, not the inside lining, but the outside. And they've done all of the hard work for you. It's a process that you can do with other patterns, even if they're not color blocked, but like on this piece here where it's going to be sewn to another one here if you decide to decide to just chop up another pattern that you have to color block it make sure wherever you you cut it that you give yourself whatever seam allowance you're going to be using like 5 8 so say if you cut it right here you're going to need to add that seam allowance to both sides of whatever you cut but they have hopefully already done that for us so i'm just going to cut it out as is all right, so I got it all cut out and I'm gonna take a break because if you are playing along at home, that's a lot of cutting, a lot of organizing, a lot of reaching and everything. And so I'm just gonna let all of my pieces sit over there. I'm gonna go take care of some other things. And uh, if I feel like it, I'll be back later on today. If not, it'll be tomorrow. But um, the, the, the pieces are big and they look pretty simple. I think it's just a matter of a large quantity of pieces and large pieces. I don't necessarily, at this point, at least think this is going to be a really difficult pattern. So there's that. So anyhow, I'll see you in a little while. Okay, so welcome back to the next day. I'm just going to clear some things off my table here. And we're going to get started with sewing the right front together. So. Right off the bat, all of my fabrics will ravel, unravel, okay? So I will be surging around each and every piece. If I forget to mention that along the way, just understand before I sew anything together, I will be surging just the very edge to keep things nice and neat and not unraveling. Now the piece number two does have pocket markings here, so I will need to transfer those over. Piece number one, which is going to go up on the top right here. It also has some markings for the center front. Um, this pattern indicates to use big old snaps along the front. I'm probably just going to use buttons and buttonholes. I just feel like it. I think with a flannel opening that that will be sufficient, you know. So the other thing is the instructions don't say to stay stitch or anything the neckline up here i am going to i'm actually going to fuse some stay tape around here at the top edge so 
Um, I will show you that in a minute. But the first thing I need to do is transfer my markings over. So I need to make sure for this pocket piece here that I am putting these markings on the right side of my fabric. And actually, these front button ones go on the right side too, so that's all good. So the way that I am going to mark all these is my usual big old piece of leather, which is actually a coaster, if you're interested, heavy duty, my leather hole punch, and a heat erasable pen. I'll use the white one on the black fabric and the blue one on a lighter colored one. I think that will work. So let me just slide my little piece of leather underneath the tissue paper here, punch down, and punch out the centers of all of these little dots. Up here also, and then once those are done, then I can come back with my little heat erasable pen and color them in. If you're using uh, the white one, the deal with the white one is when you first draw it, it doesn't show up at all. After it dries, then it becomes visible. So, you know, if that freaks you out, use some chalk or something like that if you're on a darker background, but I'm, I'm kind of used to it by now, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, let me see if I can turn the light on so you might be able to see a little bit better. These are my little dots here, and I'm just gonna keep my little pattern right here as a cheat sheet so I know what in the world I am drawing. So the outside ones are gonna be connected here and out here. And basically, I am just gonna try to duplicate this whole little diagram onto my fabric. I find especially when dealing with welted pockets and things like that, it's a whole lot easier to have the most information you can available. Um, down here, I am actually just going to draw the rectangle and the center line of my rectangle because I'm going to figure out this little angle here as I'm ready to cut it. But if I put my ruler, come on, show up for me. Here I can see that this rectangle, it's half an inch wide. Be easier to measure it there. So I should have a quarter inch on each side of that center line. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw that in. Move my head up in here. That looks pretty good. So I've got this all drawn on. In addition to these, there are a couple button placement dots I've transferred over here. And also there is one over here that looks like an underarm sleeve matching dot there, okay? So this is done. I'm gonna surge around it. Okay, so I'm working on my top piece, you know, marking it and everything. And there's a dot way up here at the top that I've marked but as soon as I iron it, that's gonna erase. So I am just going to pull off my tissue paper, but keep it handy because as soon as I'm done ironing my, my stay tape on, um, I'm gonna have to put that back on. But I did not show um, the way that I clip my seams. Get a piece, some scissors here. I just clip into the fabric. And I do this before, in general, before I serge around it. Um, my serging will go over my little clip, but if I really look for it, I can find it, you know? And so that will work for me. So let's go over to the ironing board. Okay, so this neckline here is going to have a band sewn onto it. And in general, for necklines. I want something that's going to reinforce it to keep it from stretching out of shape. But stay stitching is my my least favorite option because it's so easy to have those stitches visible on the outside. So what I'm going to use is this Sew Keys E woven fusible stay tape. Okay? And I'm going to set it in so that they, the pattern is calling for a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'll probably be trimming that in later. But I'm going to set about a fat eighth of an inch of space from the edge of my tape to the outside edge 
because I want to make sure that my stitching line is going to be where the tape is. And my iron is turned off. Let me turn it on and heat it up. Oh, if you're ever curious, I think I've shown it before. The iron that I have, it is this rapid steam iron from the waywalk.com catalog. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. I love it. It's big, it's beefy, it has a ton of steam, you know, a huge water reservoir. Um, but it is heavy, but sometimes people ask and I thought I would point that out while I'm waiting for it to warm up. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can do this without steaming up my camera. Basically, I'm getting it started flat here. I don't really wanna stretch my stay tape, um, but I'm just gonna curve it in here so I have a tiny little buckle up here on the inside edge. That's okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna iron that on there. Move this so I can get a better angle. And again, bring my tape in. I have a little buckle there, that's okay. I wanna make sure that the outside edge is nice and smooth. This is a woven, so it does not stretch, which is what you want for a stay tape, okay? All right, so now that that is on, I can go ahead and clip it off the little roll right here, and that's gonna be nice and supported. I'll go ahead and serge all the way around this piece and then transfer those dots back on up here that I just erased. Okay, so I got all that done. Here's my stay tape. The serging's all on. I'm just gonna use white serging for everything, you know, so it's gonna look a little odd on the black parts, but I refuse to switch yarn or switch thread that often, you know. So to make sure that I have this sewn correctly and placed correctly, what I'm gonna do is just lay it face up where it's gonna make sense, okay? And this makes sense this way. And then I just flip one over on top of the other here. Now there is a notch. I have it right here that is gonna match up on this side. But once it's all matched up, at the point five eight seven inch in, that's where it's gonna match up here. So if you are looking at it and you know this is sticking out a little bit on that side and over here, it's sticking out a little on this side, that's gonna be okay because at that point five eight seven inch down, that's where everything's going to meet up and that's good. So let me go ahead and get this pinned. I'm going to stitch it at 5 eighths of an inch and then press this seam allowance open. I am not pressing it open. I just looked at the instructions and they want you to press both of them up. I'm wondering if we're going to top stitch that, which might be good. Oh wait, no. This is why they're having you press it up because if you press that down, it's going to run into where this pocket area is. So. Good to know, good to know. Okay, so it's actually been many, many hours since my last video taping. The FedEx truck drove up, which brought me a little rug I had ordered. Because I got the rug, I had to rearrange the entire living room furniture. And then that made me too tired to sew for a while, so I got sidetracked into other projects, but it's late at night and I am back. So I got that one side done. The next set of instructions here are gonna be doing something very similar. It's just on the opposite side. So instead of the black on the bottom and the flower on top, now it's gonna be my button stuff on the bottom and flower. Same exact process. I'm going to be, you know, clipping my notches, drawing my dots, surging around them and when I go to sew them they're matching up on a diagonal just like the other one you know with it poking out just a hair on each side there are notches well I thought there was a notch I guess there's not a notch but that's okay it's just a straight line easy to match when you get this line sewn again you're going to be pressing the seam allowance up towards the top Okay, so I just pinned it onto my dress form so we can get an idea of what it's looking like. It's definitely bold and asymmetrical, you know, kind of like an 80s haircut. <sighs> I am hopeful that it's going to get better. Um, 
yeah right now it just looks odd to me but we'll figure it out we'll figure it out I almost feel like there should be some kind of a defining line right here like a little stripe of something to separate these two prints maybe I'll sew a ribbon or something on there but something to break that up you know right here that's really clear clearly defined I think if I was to do this again I would use my print and two solids instead of two prints and one solid but you know we'll live and learn and it'll be cozy anyway I'm over here working on Rosie today and um, I wanted to show you I've decided to put some ribbon down the side here or down this little place let me turn my light on there we go and yes I am using white thread but here's my thing this is all about sewing and stitching so I was figuring actually showing the stitching line is kind of you know in keeping with the whole thing so yeah I ran one row of stitching up one side I'm just going to do the other one up the other side so I'm not sure how well the light's going to show you but I'm just using a narrow foot here and just running up the edge of the ribbon and uh, she does really well on straight stitches that's what she is she's a straight stitch machine but what she does she's fabulous at all right so here she is now I like it I think that that really helps you know divide up those two prints and right now it is late very dark outside and my battery on my camera is about dead so I'm going to call it a night get everything charged up I got a busy day tomorrow but I will see what I can do tomorrow afternoon hello everybody it's actually been a couple days since I worked on this and I came back up to my room what is it is it morning or afternoon well it's still late morning and I decided I don't like the white thread on this ribbon so I'm just picking it off and then I'm gonna put it back on with gray thread and I'm just gonna keep that gray thread on my machine I think that that will be fine but yeah the white was bothering me but um it is what is today Sunday and a few days ago YouTube reminded me that it, I have been on this channel for two years so that's exciting you know I never really thought about where this would go but it's been nice it's been fun you know some videos people enjoy some nobody notices but that's okay honestly this is just a channel of me and my sewing projects you know I'm not claiming to be the know all end all of sewing knowledge it's just what I've acquired over the years and how I do stuff so anyway <clears throat> especially all you guys who have been with me from the beginning I know that there's some who have been with me from the very very beginning thank you so much thanks for everyone that has joined in I really appreciate your support and uh, we're just going to keep going you know making projects okay so our next step is we're going to be putting the pocket lining onto our front pieces we just did so there's two different pocket pieces seven is the lining six is the main pocket this is not for this step hopefully that'll be a future step just ran upstairs okay this is out of my pink broadcloth so I am going to serge it am I let me look at the instructions real quick you know the entire pocket is going to be encased inside of the lining so because of that I don't think I'm going to serge around these pockets I think they're going to be okay at least this broadcloth it's woven tightly enough but what I do need to do is punch out these three circles and transfer these markings because that's what we're going to use to match onto our front pieces all right you got those punched out just going to come back with my little pen and mark them and sometimes on these thinner fabrics I can see my dots through doesn't look like it this time though let me go ahead and transfer it onto the back okay so what I do on this side do the same thing on the other side okay so this is my side seam over here there's a little dip in there for my arm here's my pocket on one of these places here there was a middle dot 
the line with that middle dot is the one that we're going to be matching this up to. Okay, so let me just start with the middle one. So I'm going to stick a pin through the dot on this side and through the dot on my There you go through the dot on my outer jacket and just let that hang out so it's straight up and down. That's just going to kind of be my pivot point here. Then I can take a peek on this side where that dot is and make sure it's matched up to the top one. Come on down. Okay, that looks like it's pretty well in line, so I'm just going to go ahead and pin it from the outside. And I drew a line connecting them so that I could see my stitching line on the outside here. Just guiding it down to the bottom, lining up this dot down here with the dot on my jacket. And that looks good there. So now that I have it all pinned on, I'm going to stitch just on that line I drew that's, you know, connecting those three dots all the way up, nice straight stitch. And then I'm going to come back and trim off some of my excess seam allowance. So I need to do this on both sides. All right, I got to show you this because, you know, things happen. And I got this done and I came over here and I'm looking all over for my other lining pocket, our pocket lining piece. I sewed them both on. Look at this. Can you believe that? Of course you can because people make mistakes. So. I have enough of this fabric, I can cut another piece of it. So I am just going to come back in here and trim off one of these layers. You know, things happen. And hopefully, <clears throat> maybe this side will come off. Well, let me just chop that. Will it pull through? No, I'm going to trim it up on this side too. But I just wanted to point that out. You know, sometimes things happen but I'll just be cutting an extra one of these. But while I'm here with my scissors, they want us to take this seam allowance down to a quarter inch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I am just batting a thousand here today. Um, there was one other thing I forgot to do, and I should have done this before I put the pocket on. So if you're following along, do this next step first. Um, down here at the very bottom and very top of this little rectangle, I need to run a stabilizing stitch on those lines. So I'm just going to kind of fold this back. I'm not pressing it yet because as soon as I press it, all my marks disappear and I don't want that. So I'm just folding it back and I'm just going to run a stitch straight across the bottom, straight across the top on both of my uh, right and left side. Okay, so now that that is done, um, that center line that we put inside that little rectangle. I need to cut that open. And it's, my little mark is getting a little bit faint there. Now here's the bottom right here. I'm gonna start about a half inch up, okay? And start my little slit there. And like I said, <clears throat> I should have made that stabilizing stitch earlier, but that's okay, it's all gonna work out. So let me go ahead and slice it open all the way up to about a half inch from the top. Once I get that opening done, then what I need to do is, you know, this is say where I stopped. I need to come over here and clip up to, but not through those two corners, okay? So I'm going to end up with a little triangle piece right here. Okay, I wanted to show you that I've got it pressed, so one of my top marks is still here. My bottom one is not. Um, but it, when you're done pressing it, this is the right side. You should have just a big open rectangle, okay? So from the inside, what I would do is first, you know, with the pocket on as you sewed it, iron this flat and then pull it open and then iron it again this way. And I'm pulling it just enough that I see a hint of my garment fabric there. Um, which is going to mean that my lining is not visible from the outside, or at least that's my goal. And then pressing the little triangles out and this edge over about a quarter inch. Okay. Okay, I just, you know, got to my page three of four of the instructions and I just realized that they want you to put a zipper into these pockets. And 
I don't know that that's necessary for me here. Um, part of me wants to do it just to show how to do it, but you know, this is a pretty lightweight little jacket. It's not like I'm going to be skiing down the hill and I'm worrying about something popping out of my jacket pocket, you know, so I'm going to skip putting the zipper in. Sorry about that. Um, so that's going to skip all of this down here and we're going to get to where we're going to get our other pocket piece on and sew that on. So let me get my pocket piece number six. Okay, so I should have a pocket piece that is the right fabric for each side. So I will be using the black one on this side and my buttonish one on the other side over there so that that will match pretty well. Lost my pin dish. Let me go ahead and get that and we will get this pinned on. Okay, there are dots on this pocket piece. I didn't actually transfer them because I'm more or less using my lining piece as a guide here. So let me move this back. Okay, so I am lining it up. I think that shows better. Where the edge of my pocket around this curved edge is matching up with the edge of the black one. Okay, so the pink is measuring up to the black. Now, here's the thing. Up here at the top, the pink is ends right here. The black keeps going for at least another inch. All right, and the same down here at the bottom. All right, so what we're going to be doing, because I don't have a uh, zipper that I am worrying about here. That's actually going to make this a little bit easier. But I'm going to draw this on with my little ruler here so we can see what's going on. I need to stitch it and I believe it is at 5 8 of an inch because that's the distance from the center of my dots to the seam allowances. So that's how I know that's the seam allowance. Okay, so at 5 8 of an inch and I'm stitching just through these two pieces of pocket. I'm not going through the front of my fabric up here. Okay, so let me just stick this together so I can move it a little more freely. It is kind of fun with flannel because, you know, it's like a flannel graph where it all sticks together. Not that, not that the young folk know what a flannel graph is, but anyway. Okay, so on the instructions, you can see when it gets up to that 5 8 inch point, you're going to cut straight over. At this point, you cut straight over. So how I'm going to mark this is putting my ruler so I can see 5 8 of an inch right there. That's going to give me my stitching line. Okay. And up here at the top, putting my ruler 5 8 of an inch down. That's going to be my stitching line up here at the top. Right here and right here. Everything else is just following it along the edge of the pocket. If that makes sense. But making sure these are loose. You're not going through this, just through this. I wanted to point out um, on this one, because it's easier to see, um, underneath my pocket, in my pocket lining, I had to make a little clip right below where this little triangle pressed area is so that my pocket would lay nice and flat that way so that you know, I could match up the edges there. So just pointing that out, you might have to do the same. Okay, so it's time to make the little pocket welt. I want to point something out here. Um, this little piece five is our welt and you should have one and you know, you're two different fabrics. Um, one little typo, it says fold the welts in half with wrong sides together. Okay. Stitch outer edges leaving an opening enough for turning. You actually want to fold it with the right sides together, not the wrong sides together. Okay, so just giving you that little heads up because the next step is to turn it right side out. If your wrong sides are already together, you can't turn it out, you know. So, putting it right sides together like so. And the way that we're going to be stitching this is at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. They want you just to pick a point on this long side and give yourself enough room to leave an opening that you can flip it. So I'm going to put those two little lines so I can see that's probably about four inches apart, give or take, you know. So I'm going to come up over 
and then here and down on both of my pocket welt pieces. Okay, so with that done, I'm just gonna take some of the bulk out of these corners here. Yes, I have a white bobbin and a gray upper thread, you know. I don't think that's the end of the world. And turn these right side out. I almost forgot I need to trim this corner where the fold is too. And you know what? I'm going to take it down to about a quarter inch in between them. Okay. So I'm going to go here and there. Okay, now I'll flip it. Okay, so now that I have it flipped, um, I am going to go over to my ironing board and press it so it's nice and flat. This opening is still open, you know, but that's okay for right now. Okay, so before I can put these on, I need to deal with this outside edge because this is going to go here, okay? But this is still not attached because I did not use a zipper, all right? So what I'm going to do is just place it where I want it to be on top of... Here, let me put a few pins here and I'll flip it over so I can show you what I'm talking about. I am just going to edge stitch this straight here and around the corners in place before I put my welt on. Okay, so I have pinned it where I want, all right? So on the inside, basically, I'm pinning it so that it is, that line is covering up this side edge here of the pocket, okay? So I'm gonna do that on both of them run an edge stitch across the top corner down and across the bottom down here but leaving this part open. I'm going to do that on both pockets. All right I'm actually thinking I'm going to reverse my welts and put this one on the black and this one on the white just for fun. Um, it, this can be tricky, just letting you know. So before you put this on, make sure if you, you can reach in from the side, this is where my sleeve is gonna be up here. You can reach in the side and get your hand in your pocket. Make sure that if you tug on your pocket, nothing's gonna come open here, okay? Once you do that, you're gonna get your little welt and I'm placing it so that my opening is over here because I'm gonna stitch that closed as I go. And I want to put the top of it so it covers where that seam is on the top. The tricky part is if you are edge stitching just straight down here, you can't do that because you're going to close up your pocket, you know. So I think I'm going to do this in two steps. First, I'm going to do the top and the bottom because that goes through all of the layers of my fabric, okay. Just like this, just edge stitching that. Then I'm going to come back once that is very secure and I can get these pins out of the way, open it up and edge stitch it this way. And honestly, it might be easier just to do it by hand, you know, just saying. It's kind of an interesting way they have you do all of these instructions, but we're trying to follow along. So, you know, that's us. So let me go ahead and get this edge stitched at the top and the bottom going through all of my layers here. Okay, so I've got it stitched here on the sides, you know, that goes all the way through. But I think I'm just gonna whip stitch this outside edge here. So you wanna make sure that you can still, you know, get your finger in between there in your pocket. Um, I have this pinned. When I stitch it, I'm gonna put my hand inside my pocket readjust these pins so that they are only going through that top layer here um, because I do not want to stitch my pocket close. That would be defeating the purpose, okay? So you want to make sure this is open all the way. If you can get this into your sewing machine, you know, and sew this little row, great, go for it. Um, I am not too sure I can maneuver that on Rosie over there right now. And honestly, this is only like six maybe eight inches long. That's not gonna take me time at all to do it by hand. So give me a minute, get this done, and I'll be right back. While I am stitching this, I just thought I would mention that I know for a fact that there was a better way to put all of this together, but I was trying to follow along with the instructions, you know. Um, if you have a 
a sewing book that has, you know, how to do all kinds of sewing things in there, I would suggest looking up welted pockets in there. They will probably give you, you know, at least one or two ways to put in a welted pocket um, in a different manner than this was that you can follow along with. I highly recommend having a little sewing library, you know, with at least one of those general purpose, all, all techniques of sewing kind of books. You know, there's all kinds of brands out there. So anyway, just thought I would mention that. Okay, so I got that done. You know, again, once you're done, make sure you can put your hand in your pocket. These are not huge pockets, but they're big enough to stick your hand in. So, you know, we got that going for us. Um, the next step is going to be to get started with the back. Okay, so it's going to be a very similar process to the front. There's no darts or anything. I'm just going to serge around these pieces, sew them together at 5 8 7 inch. I wanted to point out again up here, they do not show stay stitching or anything like that. So just like the front, I'm going to use my fusible stay tape around the back edge of my back piece. As far as marking, there's really only one dot on each of the sleeve areas right here. Well, two up here near the top and then down here. Um, so I'm going to be marking those, but I'm also putting a little mark here where the center back is. Okay. I want that so that it's easy to find also. I need to take a break because I just made a stupid mistake and that is usually the trigger for I need caffeine or lunch or something. And it was, I came over here to mark, I threw my coaster underneath and pushed it all the way through. So I actually cut a tiny hole in my fabric. Um, which one was it now? I think it's the one over here on this side. But anyway, I cut a tiny hole in my fabric. Can't even find it now, so obviously it wasn't that big of a deal. Ah, there it is. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, um, on the wrong side when I'm putting my stay tape on. I'm just going to fuse a piece of that stay tape over this spot. It is on the seam allowance and everything and I'm going to have a few seams going over it. So I think it's going to be fine. You know, I just wanted to point that out. I am going to call it a session at this point. Go downstairs, get myself some lunch and a cup of coffee or tea or something and I will see you later. Okay, so it is late. I'm upstairs. I don't even know what time it is, um, but I was in the mood to sew. No one was home to stop me, so here I am. And I wanted to show you, I went ahead and put a white ribbon on this side. This is one of my fronts, just because it felt like it needed a ribbon to balance it out. And um, when I was going to put a darker one over there, it just disappeared. So there you go. But I wanted to show you, I did the same thing to my back piece. So let me go grab that and I'll show you how that looks. Okay, so this is the back and this is the bottom of the back here. I went ahead and put, you know, it's got its little triangle, but I went ahead and put that ribbon on here too. And up here, let's see if I can steady my camera here. Up here at the very top, this is a very wide back. There's a lot of ease worked into this, I think. But remember up here around the neckline, I did go ahead fuse in my stay tape and where I made that little boo-boo and cut a little hole I went ahead and reinforced that spot with some more fusible stay tape while I had it out and so I think everything is good um, I am going to call it a night tonight and it looks like tomorrow the next step is going to be getting the front and the back put together and then put the sleeves on. So um, the sleeves are single pieces. They're not pieced um, on this one. It's a very much of a drop shoulder. So the sleeve actually starts there. So, you know, dropped shoulders, big sleeves, big wide thing, doing it out of flannel and coziness. This should be a nice, lightweight, comfy jacket. And I like the cheerful colors, you know? It's getting into the season of mud out there, and I think the cheerful colors are nice. So, I will see you tomorrow. Okay, good morning, everybody. We are gonna get this done today. I'm feeling very positive about that. 
I have the full day to work on it, so why not? So this is my back piece, you know, its little corner and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and get my front pieces matched up at the shoulder. So I'm going to put this one over here and this guy with all of his colorfulness over here. Okay, so once I have them matched up, it's got this little corner right here. This corner where it kind of turns, that's your actual shoulder point. So you can see how far down it comes beyond your shoulder. But anyway, once I have this matched up, I'm going to sew it at 5 8 of an inch and then press the seam allowance open and I'm going to do that for both sides. Okay, I just turned on my iron so while I'm waiting for that to warm up, I am going to go ahead and uh, get my interfacing ready so I can iron all of that at the right time. So for this neck band, we've cut out two of them, but we're only going to put interfacing on one, okay? And then there are two of these big front facing pieces. They both get interfaced. And I am using my very typical, there we go, very lightweight, pretty cheap interfacing. Here's my, my reasoning. Even though it's a jacket, <clears throat> which could handle a heavier interfacing, I want this to be cozy. I don't want this to be super stiff, but what my, I want my interfacing to do is to keep all of these threads, you know, square. If you fuse the interfacing to it, it's not going to get skewed out of shape, you know? That's what I want, but I don't want it to be super stiff, especially around this collar. Because at least for me personally, when I have one of these types of collars and it has a corner right there and it's hitting me in my neck right there, that can be unpleasant. So if I use really soft interfacing with a really soft fabric, I think that I'm going to be able to get away with that, you know. So that's just my reasoning. You do you. If you want your stiffer, please go for it. I'm going to go ahead and get this out. And over there, I think that my iron is about warm now, so I will be back shortly. I'm over here at my iron, and um, I thought I'd mention, sometimes people ask me about my iron, and I have, you know, the Rapid Steam, there's the tank up there, Rapid Steam Iron from Waywalk. Love it. Uses a ton of water, you know. But um, this is what I wanted to show you. This is the little water filter, and you fill it up with these little bead things. Let me see. Here's my bag. Um, you buy this little bag of bead stuff. It's mostly blue. And when it all turns brown, then you know it's time to refill it. So I think I'm going to be okay for this project. But as soon as this project's over, you know, you disconnect the hoses, flush all the stuff out and fill it up with new beads. But I like it because that way I don't have to use distilled water with this thing. You know, I can fill up my big old gallon reservoir with just regular tap water. And out here we have a spring which has minerals and everything in it. We do have a water softener on the house, but still, you know, I can just fill it up. I don't have to worry about specialty water and everything. So I like this iron. I do, you know, definitely not product uh, sponsored in any way by anybody just saying but it's heavy lots of steam the only downside is you know navigating around with hoses and big cords and everything but you kind of get used to that so anyhow I just wanted to point that out okay so back to the instructions they are telling you now to stay stitch your neckline now that the front is sewed to the back so we're just a step ahead of them by using the stay tape. And for necklines, I do prefer stay tape, usable stay tape over stay stitching because it's easier to camouflage. Plus, I want to do it before I've done all of this kind of stuff because handling it this much is going to give it a lot of time to stretch out of shape. So that's why I do it early, usually. So with all of that being said, I need to go ahead and get my sleeve pieces. For the sleeves, we cut two out of lining fabric and two out of our fashion fabric, you know, two different ones, of course. So let me go ahead and grab those. Okay, so I've got my big stack of sleeves here and 
you know me, before I do anything, I'm going to label which side is the back corner before I take the pattern piece off because they, it looks very similar front to back. Okay, I don't even know if there's a difference at this point, but this is the back corner because the notch close to it has two notches. The one that has one notch is the front. So I'm just going to put with my heat erasable pen a letter B in this back corner of all of this. Let's see if I can do it on the inside of my little fashion fabrics here. And then as soon as I get that done, I'm going to go over to my serger and serge all the way around all four of these pieces. Okay, I've got that done. And I want to show you this jacket is really reminding me of Oh, where are you? I think you're in the back of these 80s jackets with the massive shoulder pads. OK, now, of course, there's not shoulder pads in this one, but seriously, this shape where it's really wide and it has these over exaggerated, really long, um, you know, 80s style shoulders. That is what this is reminding me of. I think that if I pop some massive raglan shoulder pads in there, um, well, I think that's about it for this book. Well, maybe not. Those are pretty big shoulders. Anyway, that's what this is reminding me of. So that's kind of fun. If you want to go a throwback to the 80s, pop some shoulder pads in this bad boy. So anyhow, I got them searched around the edges. I've just set my lining pieces aside. So let me go ahead and get my uh, main bodice piece down here and we're going to get these matched up. OK, so I'm just looking at the picture here and it looks like, say, her orange here is my button print that the side that has that print actually has the same color sleeve as the top part. So that's what I'm on here. So this button print sleeve is going to go away. That's a scrap that's going to go away. And here is my sleeve. OK, I did not transfer any markings onto this yet. Um, so let me go ahead and grab my sleeve pattern piece because I want to make sure that I get where uh, these dots are. There's a couple notches. These dots at the very corners, those are going to be on the 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm not going to worry about those right now, um, but these three I need to transfer. And when I mark it, I'm making sure that my side that has the double notches is on the one that is marked with a B for back. And just going to transfer these down. The center dot is going to line up with my shoulder seam. And let's see, do they want us to put in E stitches? Nope, they don't. OK, we are not putting in any gathering stitches, E stitches, anything like that. We're just going to go ahead and start matching this up. So this is my shoulder here. And I know you can't tell because it's very busy, but I have a dot right here and a dot right there. OK, so that's how I'm going to start matching this up, putting my center on the shoulder seam. And when I pin it, I'm going to pin it on each side of this seam so I can make sure that those seam allowances stay nice and flat. OK, actually I can move this one over a bit. And then I need to match up this dot. So if I just turn it so I can see that that dot is in line with that pin, that's going to work. OK, up here, it's going to look like it's a little too big. It's not, though at the 5 8 inch point where you're sit where you're actually sewing it's matching up well it's just the seam allowance it's a little big so don't don't worry about that um, you can stick another pin in the middle just to hold it in place if you want so i need to do the same thing over here and then once i have that okay i need to go ahead and get this matched up down here. If I had transferred that dot, I would be matching it exactly down here. And so maybe that is a sign that I should have, but I think we're going to be OK. And then this should line up really nicely like that. OK, so I'll pin that. Once I have this whole thing on, I'm going to sew it at 5 8 7 inch the entire way. 
and then I'm going to come back and do another row of stitching just inside of it at about a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to end up with two rows of stitching on both of my sleeves. Okay, I'm getting my second sleeve pinned on here. I don't think I mentioned that this is another one of those times where they're not going to line up at the edge but at that point, 5 8 of an inch in, they are on the edge of your, where your sleeve is joined up with your bodice, okay? So just pointing that out, and I actually already sewed my other sleeve on, and it went on very nicely, so here's my two rows of stitching, if you can see, and it goes on without making any puckers and everything. But if you're sewing, and it feels like this, there's more fabric on the sleeve side than on the bodice side even though they don't want you to ease anything in if when you're sewing you can just kind of pull the fabric apart crosswise it kind of cinches the little threads a little bit closer together and it's you know it works itself in so there's that so let me go ahead and get this one done all right so now that that is done i need to press my seam allowances towards the sleeve okay so i'm going to go over there and get these pressed over just like that on both sides. Okay, so now that this is pressed over, and I want to show you, that's my little reinforced spot from my little mistake earlier. Um, I still think that we're going to be fine with that, you know? Don't see a problem. Um, I need to go ahead and pin together my se seam that's under the arm here, and it continues down the front. Okay, down the side like this. So I'm going to have a seam that goes from the bottom up and over. Um, I believe we're only stitching that once. That's what it looks like on the instructions. And so once I have this done at 5 8 7 inch the entire way, I'm going to press that seam allowance open. I've actually already done that over here on this side. So this is the underarm seam over here, and it matches up. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be cute. Okay, so they are going to want us to work on the hem of the jacket now, and the pattern calls for a one and a half inch hem. Okay, so that is what we shall do. I'm going to turn one of my sleeves inside out here. Okay. Now, just for simplicity here, um, I'm just going to draw a line. It'll help me line things up a lot easier. So if I need a one and a half inch hem, I'm going to double that, make a line at three inches, just, you know, a couple of them here. I'm going to iron this off in just a moment. Okay. And then I can fold this up so that the raw or surged edge of this sleeve is going to line up with that line that I just drew. And that's going to give me my one and a half inch hem. So once I have this on, I'm going to go ahead and press it so I have a nice edge down there before I keep going with their sewing instructions because what they're going to have you do is once it's pressed come back and hand baste this edge um, you know long basting stitches just to hold that nice crease down here but they're also going to want you to hem this up and it looks like in their picture with a blind stitch so you know we'll do that um, on both of my cuffs. Okay, so I got those pressed. Now I'm just going to do what they say in baste around the bottom here. Grab a thimble. Okay, so just with a needle and thread, probably add about an eighth of an inch in, you know. I'm just going to take some pretty sizable basting stitches all the way around the bottom edge of this cuff. And that's going to hold this fold in place while I do my next step. All right, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I got a bunch of baby cows out here, and they are playing with banny chickens. And I know it's going through the screen, so it's kind of funny. Probably missed it. But we had a whole flock of banny chickens and then little cows running after them, making all kinds of crazy noises. So cute. Okay, anyhow, back to sewing. Okay, so I have my basting stitch in, okay, 
and I'm working on my hemming now. And so, you know, needle and thread here. What I do is I've got my surged raw edge here and I'm folding it over so that I have maybe about a quarter of an inch here. All right, so with about a quarter of an inch folded down here, I'm up in the fold. I'm gonna come from where this thread comes up. I'm gonna skip about an eighth of an inch or so, come down here and pick up maybe a thread of my garment fabric, okay? And then pull that, skip about another eighth of an inch or so, you know, and then come up here in the fold and I'm taking a little stitch like that, all right? And then I can come skip another about an eighth of an inch from where my thread came out, come back down and just pick up a thread or so and keep going, doing the same thing over and over. There's lots of ways to do this. This looks pretty close to the method that they have a picture of on the um, instructions. So that's what we're going with here. So once I get all the way around, let me just anchor that here. On the inside, the lining is gonna go over this. So I know you probably can't even see, but there are some tiny little stitches there. But on the outside, it's pretty much an invisible hem, okay? So that's how I'm gonna do it. I got this sleeve just started. I need to do the other one and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've got those hem stitches put in and I'm going to go ahead and do the next part, which is this collar. And you know what? I need to mark where the bottom is. I'm trying to draw a line where my center back is just because that is always helpful to me. So I put a little mark up here where the top is. I'm going to draw one down here where the bottom is and just connect that with a quick little line because that's going to be helpful when I'm getting everything orientated. So this dot here is where the shoulder seam is going to match up. Okay, this is, you know, the front. So this does have a 5 8 inch seam allowance, which is not my favorite for a collar stand, but we're going to see if it'll work since this is just one layer at this point. So I'm going to get my jacket up like this and I think I just threw my collar piece on the floor. Let me bend down and get that. Okay, there we go. Can you see? Yes, you can. Now actually I am going to fold this in half matching my shoulder seams so that I can get an exact point where my center back is on my jacket. I'm just going to stick a little pin there really quick. Okay. So using my part that has interfacing on it, the one without interfacing, we'll deal with that later. I'm going to be putting them right sides together and it's curved like that. Okay. The side that has the notches, all of these dots down here, that's the side that gets sewn onto the jacket. Okay, so that's this side here. So I'm going to go ahead and match up my center back first. Right there. Okay, and then this part right here, that's my shoulder seam. This is the dot that matches with my shoulder seam. So I'm just going to kind of turn that and angle it so that this dot is on that shoulder seam, okay? I know it looks very awkward. We're probably gonna be clipping some stuff here very soon, okay? Um, yeah, I don't like that at all, but that's okay. What I'm actually gonna do, just to make my life easier here, is on the inside, I'm gonna make some clips on my jacket side of my neckline up to where my stay tape is. Um, that's gonna let this flex a little bit more so that then I can pin it to this side, okay? So see how that's opening it up? That'll make it a lot easier to sew. 
So let me go ahead and put a few pins here. I'm going to make those same clips on the other side of my center back and get this side matched up to this shoulder. Okay, so with that done, this dot here is 5 8 7 inch in on each side and there is a dot well, it's kind of faded now, but I can see it right there in the same place on this piece in the front. So if I get those two matched up right there and get my cut edge up here lined up, I can just cinch that down. And the same thing here where it looks like that's not going to be very happy. I'm going to about every inch or so just make about a quarter inch deep little slice so that this will lay a lot better for me. Okay, so now that that is done, I can bring it up and match up the raw edges together and get this pinned. Once I have it pinned all the way across, I'm going to sew it at 5 8 7 inch and we do the entire thing. So starting at the very raw edge here, just go straight across all the way around at 5 8 of an inch. Okay, so I've got it sewn on and I want to show you, see how my stitching line is going over where my stay tape is? That's what I wanted. Now, if you were um, clipping it like I did and it still wasn't fitting, you can clip into this stay tape. You know, you just don't want to clip, in my experience, to within a sixteenth of an inch of that stitch line. Okay. I want to always give myself a little bit of a buffer between the end of my clip and where my stitch line is going to be. So that works for me. Okay, so I've got my front facing piece here and there's a few things I need to mark. I've just drawn in these two little notches here. Um, this dot up here, that's at the seam allowance 5 8 inch, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, this dot down here for view B, I'm going to mark that because I believe that that has something to do with where you need to stop when you're hemming. So I'm just going to put another little little mark right there for, for where the, that dot is, okay? Now that that is done, between these two notches, we need to run a row of stay stitching. So a straight row of stitching just between here, and I'm going to do that around 5 8 7 inch, maybe slightly less. It seems, you know, redundant because this is interfaced, but the thing is that this is going to be clipped and um, having that stitching line is going to keep those clips from, you know, getting out of sorts. So let me go ahead and put that on on both of my front facing pieces. I wanted to show you, I popped her onto my dress form just to see what she is looking like. Let me see if I can zoom this in. So I think she's looking kind of cute. Oops, over there. I think that she's looking kind of cute, you know, in her own special kind of way. Definitely not going to be another one like it, I'll tell you that. So I need to go ahead and get my lining piece, my front lining piece, because that is going to get sewn onto that front facing that we just stay stitched. Okay, so I've got my piece number 12, my front lining here. Um, I am going to serge around this piece, you know, individually, but also there's some markings that need to be transferred over. These two here, those notches, those are going to match up to the ones that we just stay stitched for on that other piece. There is a sleeve dot here. There is another dot down here at the bottom um, that has to do with the hem, so I'm going to be transferring those over. But first, I'm going to take this over and serge around each one of these pieces. Okay, my microphones are charging, so I'm just doing this without them right now. But I wanted to show you, I have pinned my uh, front lining to my facing. And so at this point up here, I've trimmed or clipped multiple times up to that stay stitching there. But also, and I don't think they showed this on the instructions, on the lining side above this point, I made a couple little clips because we had this curve going this way and then a curve going that way. So making a couple little clips up here in the lining is going to help that lay nice and flat. But what I really wanted to point out is down here at the bottom, 
These are not going to match up. The facing piece is longer than the lining piece. That's correct. That's what it's supposed to be. So when you see that, don't get freaked out. But um, I can see right here is my little dot. Draw it again right there. And so what I'm going to do is sew it from this dot, leaving this open down below, okay, from this dot at 5 8 7 inch all the way up and around to this point on both of my um, front facing, front lining pieces. Okay, so over here at my ironing board, I'm going to press these seam allowances towards the lining, okay, like this all the way down. And then I am going to stop, take a break, go downstairs and get some lunch. And hopefully by the time I get back up here, my batteries will all be recharged and we'll be ready to hit this again. Alrighty, look at us flipping over to page four of four. We are on a roll here. I need to get my two backlining pieces. And uh, we're going to make a pleat in the back of it. I did not notice that before. That's cool. Okay, let me go grab those. Okay, so we have this line right here on the back. And that is going to be the line that we're going to be using to make this pleat thing. So I am expecting that I need to draw that in. Um, so let me go ahead and punch some circles as I do. Actually up here at the top, I can just see where that line is. and I'm just going to draw it on both sides. But down here, can you see where this is, where this little line here, this pleat line ends? I'm actually going to punch that out. Put a little circle at that angle right there. Okay, and then put a little dot there. And then that way I can just come in here with a ruler and connect these two points. And that is going to give me my pleat folding line here or stitching line, whatever it is. This dot should be at about 5 8 7 inch. Well, it looks more like 3 quarters, but who's counting? So this distance here, that's my regular 5 8 inch seam allowance. This is my amount of my pleat. Okay, what I need to do before I get started doing all of this stuff is, of course, first I'm going to serge around both of these pieces and then I'm going to come back after they're serged, sew them together at 5 8 7 inch down this center back. Okay, so let me get those two steps done and I'll be right back. Almost forgot to mention before I actually go and do that, there are a couple other spots I need to mark. Here's that dot. This one, sure, I'll mark it. Why not? And um, that's about it. The rest of them are just notches, and that is not that critical to me right now. So there we go. Alrighty, so I got all of that done. Here is my stitching line. Look at that blending in so nicely. Okay, what they want you to do right now is with this still folded, I haven't pressed the seam allowance open or anything, is based down this pleat line, you know. So I'm just going to do that with a needle and thread, you know, take nice long easy basting stitches because I'm going to be pulling it out pretty soon. I just need to get that in there so I can press it and get a nice crease when I press it. So give me a moment. I will, if I can pull my thread out here, get that done. Alrighty, so I can tell you there have been a lot of times in my life that I have wanted to skip all of these seemingly tedious hand basting steps. And you know, the majority of the time it has come back to bite me. So at this point, here's my philosophy. I love to sew. And when I'm done with this project, I'm going to do another project. I love the process of sewing. So the point of racing through a step, you know, and shortchanging myself just so I can get something done when all I'm going to do when I get done is, you know, spend five minutes really enjoying it before I decide what my next project is going to be. I don't see the point in that. So. 
I shall sit here and hand baste it and you can see I'm taking really big stitches and you know maybe two minutes into this and it'll be done. Okay so now that that is done I have it over here on my ironing board with my wrong side up and I'm going to push this whole thing over to one side. They don't say which side so I guess you can just pick. So I'm picking this side and now I'm ironing it and that's going to set that nice little crease in the back. And once this is done what I need to do is come back and across the top right here probably you know about 3 8 of an inch in and down here holding this seam allowance over I need to base that in place so that this little pleat will stay going that direction. Okay, so now that that is done, this is the right side of my lining. You know, I've got my little basting stitches up there. Looking lovely. So I need to put my front lining pieces on now up here at the shoulder level. So I'm going to grab one over here, just kind of like what we did with the outside. Match it up. Sew it at 5 8 of an inch and then press the seam allowance open. I'm going to do that for both sides. Okay, so I've got it sewed, got my seam allowances pressed. This is my lining. Now the next step they want you to do is put stay stitching around here, okay? I am going to once again use my stay tape, set it in about a quarter inch so that my tape is over my, my seam line. Um, I just don't want to deal with having to, you know, having to have a lot more trouble trying to make sure that those stay stitching lines are not visible I guess is what I'm trying to say. There's nothing wrong with it. You can do it if you want to. I'm just going to use my stay tape so let me go ahead and get that fused on. Okay so with that done the next thing is going to be putting these sleeves on and it's going to go they're going to go on exactly the same way as the front. Um, I did not mark my three little dots on here yet. I'm going to do that really quick, but making sure your back goes towards the back, front towards the front, match up the dots as soon as I draw them on here, and get them stitched on. And just like for the other sleeve, they want you to do two rows of stitching, one at 5 8 of an inch, and one just inside of it. Alrighty, so I've got my sleeve sewn on, press the seam allowance towards the sleeve and now I'm going to sew up the underarm and sleeve seam just like we did with the outside one. I'm matching up this little seam line here in the underarm area first and then matching up the rest. We're going to sew this at 5 8 of an inch, you know, from the cuff all the way down to the bottom hem and then press that seam allowance open on both sides. Okay, so I've got that done. I am transferring the dots on this little neckband piece here onto my neckband that did not have the interfacing because that is what we're going to be attaching here. Um, the back piece does have this pleat but it also is a different piece than the one we use for the outside so I'm assuming that this part right here is still center back. That's what I'm going to be going with. We will see. Um, so let me get this marked and then we're going to go ahead and pin it on just like for the other uh, side, the one that had the interfacing on it. Uh, there is a very good chance that we may need to clip some of the edges here so that the band will lay nice and flat while we're sewing it on. Let me measure and make sure that that is the same on each side. So rocking it over there and yeah that's the same measurement on both sides here. So I'm going to go ahead and line up my center back here with the edge of that pleat. This dot here is going to line up with where this shoulder seam is. Okay pinned in place. Same over here, lining up this dot with where the shoulder seam is, making sure that the edge is matching up to the raw edge of the fabric there. And the side that does not have interfacing usually is more flexible, but I think I still need to make some clips. So just like last time, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to clip 
you know, about a quarter inch deep in this back area here, even over where that pleat is. And hopefully that's going to make this flex enough that it can match up. And it looks like it does, so that's a good thing. Let me go ahead and get this pinned on on both uh, sides of my center back before we move on to the front. Okay, and then now matching up the front corners here. This dot that's 5 eighths of an inch in either way should match up to a dot on the back side there. And just the same as the back, I'm going to come in here and make some clips. Oops, that was a little bit long around here so that this can flex and match up with my collar band. Okay. Now, once I have it all pinned on, I'm going to go ahead and stitch it all the way across at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so I've got it sewn on here. I think it's looking good. Now, on the instructions, because our next step is to attach the jacket to the lining. And in their picture, it looks like they have their lining sleeves inside out. So I am pulling my lining sleeves to the inside here. Just because that's what their picture looks like. And let me go get the other part of my jacket. Here is my jacket. Putting it right side up. The sleeves are in here, okay? And I'm going to be matching this outside edge here with my lining. So I'm going to put my lining right side down on top of it here. Okay, and start matching up this whole outside edge. The uh, seam allowances for the collar. Oh, I forgot to do that. They wanted you to press these seam allowances open like that. But you know what? Since I'm over here, I'm just going to use my thumbnail to, to press it open. I think that's going to work fine on both of these because uh, that can be a little bit tricky. Okay, but with those seam allowances pressed open, I'm going to match this up here and match the whole collar to this side and then all the way down the front, matching it all the way up to the bottoms right here. Okay, let me get that done. Okay, so I've got it all sewn and I came over to my ironing board and just pressed this seam allowance open on both sides, you know, like I should have done the step before, but honestly, it was just as easy to do it now. Um, a couple things. First, I am going to use pinking shears and starting right underneath this collar band, I am going to trim the whole seam allowance down about halfway. So it's going to be closer to about a quarter inch pinked seam allowance. And if I need to make any little clips so it flexes better. In addition to that, I can, but I think that this is going to be good. Um, the other thing is down here, at the bottom, okay, let me see here if the pattern piece says what size hem we're supposed to put on. Okay, the instructions say we need to stitch an inch and a half above the lower edge. So what that means is I'm coming down here to my very bottom. I'm going to put my ruler at an inch and a half here and draw a line which is just below where this is. Get my pen way over there. Okay, so I'm going to draw this line and then come back and I'm going to stitch straight across here and I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. Back over here, a couple things. First of all, where I made this stitching right there, I need to trim off this inside part. Um, they actually have a diagram. How far are they clipping? It says uh, trim as shown. Well, they're just showing to trim off just a little bit of this inside part. So, but that doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to go ahead and come in and clip this off also in the background because then that way when I flip it right side out, there's not a bunch of bulk right here in the corner. Okay. So that's how I'm trimming it. But I wanted to point out on their diagram also, I noticed that at this point, they now want you to press this seam allowance open. And it seemed like earlier in the instructions, they had it pressed over to one side, which is how I did it here. 
um, but now they want it pressed open. So I will do that, but way up here at the top, it is stitched in over to one side. So I'm gonna need to clip this seam allowance here and open it up like this so that I can press it open. So, you know, they can do that. It's their pattern instructions and I'm just trying to figure it out. So let me go ahead and press this open on both sides and clip the other uh, bottom corner just like this. I wanted to show you for getting in and pressing this weird corner. I got a ham underneath here just so that I have some way to mold all of this while I'm pressing it. It's going to make my life easier than just working on the flat ironing board surface down here. Um, but one other thing, when I first started this, I noticed that at the very bottom, you know, when I still had it pressed over to one side, that's how I stitched it. So I'm actually going to have to pick off, you know, about half an inch of stitching here so I can open this up and fold it back like this, okay? So I have to do that on both sides. With that done, I am gonna flip this whole thing right side out and try to get it smoothed down into some kind of order here um, where all of the edge is. I'm just gonna try to open that up, let it lay nice and flat. I think I need my handy dandy chopstick to come in here and smooth out this little collar band. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so I think I'm just going to put some clips on here as I go just to try to hold it. Um, and then once I have it all pushed to the right side, I think I'll be okay. I'm looking and it doesn't look like they want you to understitch around up here. It's a weird thing because you would think that they would, but it looks like they're showing, well, it says understitch facing and lining as far as possible, but they're showing the understitching over here. And that's at this point that we just pressed open because of this illustration which now has me wondering if that's even right. Um, I might just skip that because at this point we've pressed this open, so understitching it kind of is pointless. I was hoping that they would understitch around the collar or something up here, but I don't see it. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and get this edge sorted out and pull the uh, sleeve lining through into the sleeve and get that sorted out. Okay, so I went around and got it all clipped kind of in place and now I am just slowly working my way around, taking off a couple clips at a time and pressing this edge um, up here at the collar and down the fronts here. I need to do that here. So let me get that part done and um, we're going to need to do something because I have to put closures. Like I said earlier, they have snaps on their um, instructions. I'm going to use buttons. I like buttons. I've got a lot of buttons. I've got buttonhole designs, so seems kind of in keeping to use buttons instead of snaps for me. Let's see if I can iron this without erasing my little dots. Here's a button placement and here is one. If I if I do erase them, I can come back and draw new ones, but that's what those dots are for. Yeah, looks like they're getting erased, so I'm going to go ahead and press it. Okay, I know I'm steaming up my camera, so give me a minute to finish this up, and I will meet you back at the table. I need to deal with securing this part on the inside. I'm not going to worry too much about the front part because it's close enough to where this is. It's going to hold it. But for down here, I think what I am going to do is just stick a few straight pins in the middle of this collar band from the shoulder seam down here so that when I open it up it will stay in place. Okay, so now that is done. I'm going to pull my lining up and out of the way. So much fabric, so much fabric. Okay, and I've got these two seams that are 
pressed open-ish. I actually think I need to clip this just a little bit more so it's going to lay a little flatter. My plan is the bottoms of these seam allowances, okay, so they're pressed open. These, the bottom parts of these two should kind of match up between the shoulder seam on one side to the shoulder seam on another. So I'm just going to pin those together like so and then come back with a needle and thread and kind of baste in the ditch type thing. So here's my stitching line and I'm going to hand stitch just inside of it. Okay, I wanted to show you how this is going to work. Um, I have it very loosely based, basted and I have not tied it off. I still have my needle and extra thread just kind of hanging out for right now. And I want to come back and make sure that my thread is loose enough that I can open up the seam allowance, okay? Like so. All right, so with that, with that assurance that yes, I can go ahead and open that up. I'm just gonna run my fingernail on there. This is so fiddly. I'm gonna go ahead, do a couple little back stitches down here at the end, you know, leaving a good amount of thread so that it's loose. And I don't know why I took my thimble off, but there you go. And clip that off. And now I should be able to pull this back down and shake it out. Okay, let me pull these little pins out. And now we need to lock in the sleeves. So over here I have my sleeve lining, you know, inside of my sleeve. And I need to make sure that up here at the very top, let's say if I put, this is the shoulder seam and the top of my lining sleeve, I stick a pin here, trying to get that to line up with the same point on here. You can see I'm off by just a bit, so I'm going to move my pin over until it's just about in the right spot, and that looks a lot better. Okay, so leaving that in there, well, I'm not sure what happened there. Hang on, let me try it one more time. I think that that is pretty close. I think that's close enough. I'm just going to go ahead and lock this in really quick. Get a needle and thread. Just take a couple little stitches right here to connect the seam allowances and everything of the lining to this part up here at the top. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here underneath the sleeve, you know, matching up this little intersection point here and the lining with the same point on the sleeve and from the lining side, just taking a few little stitches just to tack it together so that, you know, when you go to put your sleeve on and off, the whole thing doesn't come off. Okay. Okay. We are getting so close to the finishing stages here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fold up the bottom of my lining. You can see my little pocket peeking out. I need to fold up this whole bottom edge here an inch and a half. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my little ruler. That looks good there. And very similar to the way that we hemmed the sleeve up there, what I need to do is fold this at an inch and a half, okay? We're just ignoring this part up here for right now. Get this all settled in here so it's nice. Okay, once I have it pressed all the way across, I'm going to hand baste across the bottom just to hold that edge because that's what they want, you know, and then come back in here and do my same little catch stitch just like I did around the sleeve cuff, okay? So that's going to take me just a little bit. I'll pop a, a documentary or something onto my phone to watch while I do it and I'm sure time will pass very quickly and then we will be back. Okay, so I've got this little bit here. 
whip stitch closed. I've got my hem hand stitched in, so it's pretty much invisible. I do have my threads, my basting threads still in down there. I'll pull them out when I'm done with all of this. Uh, what I need to do now for my lining is get my pocket sorted out there. I almost feel like I should tack my pocket in place, but I am not. They want us to take our pocket, I mean our lining, and turn it under five eighths of an inch. Okay, so all eyeballing it, that looks about right. And then to place the folded edge of this, and you can see how my pocket is kind of overlapping that. I'm gonna use my, when I'm sewing my lining on, to kind of tack that pocket into place so it doesn't get all messed up. I think that's gonna be my plan. Okay, so if I have this folded at 5 eighths of an inch and I'm lining up that edge, okay, with my hemmed edge down here, if you can see what I'm talking about, fold it straight down and pin it in place. I should have a little bit of a gap right here, just a little one. Um, let me see if they are intending to have more. For some reason, I don't have much of a gap, but they're showing a lot more of it. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. But anyway, what I need to do is go ahead, folding it, placing it like this, um, just at the beginning. Then I'm going to skip over here to the side seam, get it placed. And that looks pretty good there. Skip over to my center back. Well, I don't really have a center back placement, so I'm gonna skip all the way over to my other side seam and then work back towards the middle. Um, and this is gonna be more hand stitching to get it all placed in. So we're getting close to the end. I think I'm gonna get this pinned in place and go downstairs, make a cup of tea. Maybe I'll hand stitch this while I'm sitting downstairs because my dogs are missing me, I can tell. And then when I come back up, I can go ahead and pull all of these basting threads out from down here. After that, it's just gonna be finishing up the sleeve lining and putting on our buttons and buttonholes, so. Okay, welcome back. Um, I wanted to tell you, I went ahead last night and hemmed up the bottom of the sleeve, and that is the exact same process as the bottom hem, where you just turn it under, match up the raw edges, and then slip stitch it in place. So that is what I did. You don't need to see all of that again. And I need to put my buttons on. I have these cool little vintage buttons and then this smaller one for up in the collar band. Two of them were missing their little stones, so I found a couple extra stones and threw a glob of glue on there and the stone. Um, the glue will dry clear. I'm not too worried about that and I'll put those more near the bottom. But, you know, I have these. So why not use them? You know what I mean? So I am going to be putting my buttons all the way down and I have my buttonholer set up. Well, it's not set up. I have my 201 out, which fits my buttonholer really well. So I'll show you that really quick in case you haven't seen it before. Okay, so this is my 201, fabulous machine. Um, and this is my buttonholer. They're great, they're great. She's just a, a low shank machine. And I wanted to show you this, I was grabbing a, a bobbin. I don't have many of these, they're black sided bobbins, you know? Very 1940s looking, so you, usually they're chrome or plastic or something, but I like the black sided ones. Always looking for those. So let me go ahead and hook her button holder up. Um, her buttons are three quarters of an inch. I'm using a button hole size um, template that's just slightly bigger, like a 32nd of an inch bigger. So we should be good because it's a thick button with a big shank. I'm just playing on a scrap here just to get it dialed in. You know, so my first little trial, well, the tension was completely wrong. So then I got the tension right here with the next one, but I don't know if you can see, it's a very, very narrow zigzag, which is more like for a shirt 
type. So I widened it up a bit, did it again, which is wider. Um, and then this side, I've ran over it once. This side, I have doubled over it. And I think I like this one at this width, you know, where I go over that side twice. I think that that is perfect. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so before I do that, though, I'm back over here at my table. And on their front, they have um, a row of stitching at a one inch spacing from the raw edge. So, I'm thinking that if I'm going to do that, I need to do that right now, and I'm hesitating because I don't know if I want to do that. I mean, I think that my buttons will look just as pretty without that, but no, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, just to make sure that I stay on track, this is what I'm going to do though. Um, let me put one of my buttons here just to make sure that if I did it at one inch that that's plenty of room for my button to be centered. And I think it is. That's going to give me about an eighth of an inch on each side of my button. So yeah, that's close enough. So just so that I have a defined line that I can follow, I am going to use my heat erasable pen and my ruler. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to make it one inch here and then just draw that stitching line on and go back over to Rosie and get this uh, stitched on. And I have to do this to both of my front sides. Okay, so I've got that on and I wanted to point out if you're, you know, following along at home and you're making this stitch, it's going to be really easy for it to get a little bit skewed from the top layer from the bottom layer so take your time I would suggest starting at the top and working your way down I think that that would give you a better result and if you see that they're getting a little bit skewed slow down and pull your fabric this way you know pulling it apart that way and that's going to help it to readjust itself. So just take your time. It works. Trust me, it works. So now I need to get my button placement. Um, where's my ruler? Here it is. I'm going to be placing my buttonholes over here, which is the right side. Okay, because, well, no, actually they want them on the left side. You know, it's your jacket. Do whatever you want to. So we'll but I'll follow along with her. We will put the buttonholes on the left side. Okay, whatever one is gonna be on top, that gets the buttonholes. So my smaller one is gonna go up here, and I'm gonna need to make sure I remember to change out my buttonholer when I go to do that. So to get that placement, first of all, I'm gonna do these down here. Um, my jacket comes down pretty low. I'm not going to put that very bo bottom one on. I, I'm just not going to use it because that's in where I'm walking and everything. So I'm probably only going to put on these four buttons, which makes me think I didn't really need to glue those on. So, okay. So if I use these four buttons and this one, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I have a distance of one inch from this folded edge to here. I want my buttonholes, they're gonna go up and down and I want them to be in the very center of that. So I'm just gonna get my ruler again with my heat erasable pen again and draw a line at the half inch point. Okay, that's going to get, and I'm going to draw that line all the way down. That's going to be the track that I'm going to follow for all my buttonholes. Okay, so now I need to decide where I'm going to place them. And yes, on the pattern, they do have a placement, um, but that's a suggestion and you can do whatever you want to. So I'm going to use my little Simplex expanding sewing guide. It's great for placing buttonholes and just figure out where I want to have them. So if I have four buttonholes and I want them spaced wider than these two, what I'm going to do is push this together a little bit and use every other, every other little peg. So if I have one start here, two, three, four, that's pretty good. That is actually pretty good. Um, I like that. 
And then you know what? I might not put a buttonhole up here. I don't think I'm ever going to button that, but I might just sew the button on the other side just, you know, so it looks pretty. So if this is going to be my placement, you know, I'm not going to put any buttons down here below that little ribbon, which is fine in my opinion. You know, that's at this point down there. So I'm just going to make a little cross mark where every other buttonhole is going to start. This is going to be the top position of my buttons. Okay, so let me just make that slightly bigger so I can see it easily. And basically this is making a letter T. So if this is the top of the T and then down. And yes, this does erase. So, you know, I can feel free to draw all over my fabric. All right, so when I go to my buttonholer, I'm going to know that this is the top point. My buttonholer will automatically do the length that I need it to, and that this is the track that it needs to follow. So let me go ahead and head over there. Okay, I'm just going to show you once, if you haven't seen one of these cool old buttonholers working before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the um, top button. And there's a knob on the back of this thing, and then when you turn it, it moves around. And I want to get it so it's positioned in the very back center. Right about there, okay? Now you see that line back there and at the very front? That is what I'm lining up with my track line, that big vertical one. Okay, and I'm going to put my needle down at that point where the T crosses right here. Okay, so then I can put my presser lever down and hopefully all will go well and I'm just going to kind of guide it. If you're using these, um, you either have to drop your feed dogs or cover them with a plate. The 201 can drop them, so that's good. Okay, so she went around once, and remember I said I was going to do it twice to get the thickness that I wanted in that buttonhole. So, going around one more time, around the curve, and then I'm going to stop. Okay, so that is it. Then I can just raise my uh, presser foot and move her straight down to where the next position is, which is going to be right here. Okay, so they are on there, and I'm going to go ahead and cut them. I'm going to use my little buttonhole cutting scissors here. And I am going to start just a little bit in. I'm going to give myself just a little bit um, before the ends, just because this buttonhole, like I said before, is slightly, um, slightly longer than my buttons. It's so funny in my stash of button templates for this this particular machine. Um, I have 5 eighths of an inch and then I have this size which is you know a little bit more than three quarters of an inch. But I don't have three quarters of an inch so I'm gonna look for those. I might be able to use one of the ones for my other button holders in it so we'll see. But anyway, so I'm just going to do that, cut it open. I can see I'm running my fingers around in there to cut off all these little threads that are going to eventually come loose and drive me nuts. Okay, so now let me take one of my buttons and see how that's going to go if I need to cut it more. Well, it's actually kind of snug. I may have to cut it some more. Let me see here. Let's go a little closer to the top and a little closer to the bottom. Okay, that works. So I guess the buttonhole is the right size because it's so thick with everything else going on in there. So let me go ahead and get these cut um, and then we're gonna sew the buttons on in the appropriate place. But yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna be kind of cute. I like that. So I just recorded a whole big thing about button placement and I realized that the uh, record was not turned on. So we're going to do it one more time. So this little button 
Um, that's just for decoration. I'm just going to sew it up here. You know, that's going to be really cute. What I'm going to do, though, is line up my panel here so that my folded edge with, that has the buttonholes on it is just barely covering that stitching line underneath it that I just put in. Okay. And then come back in each of these buttonholes at the halfway point and draw a line this way. Just stick my pin in the buttonhole and go back and forth like that. Okay. Which is going to give me a dot. But if that dot is not exactly center, that's not a big deal because it's the up and down distance that I want, not the side to side one. So like for this one, it's not exactly center, but I want this position from what I just did. And then I can know that, well, I'm just going to sew that button on right here where it's centered that way. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and sew on these four buttons and the little one on top, and then we're going to be done. <laughs> Very bright and sunny out here. I think it's a cute jacket. It, sorry. It turned out being a little more detailed than I thought it would be in the beginning because of all the lining and the color blocking and the trims and all of that. But on the good side, it did go together really well. So, you know, I like, I like it because it's a lightweight cotton flannel. It's a lightweight cotton blend lining. To me, it's kind of like a cardigan kind of weight, you know, that I'm probably going to get a lot of use out of. It's not wanting to hold my microphone up very well. <laughs> I'll just hold it. Um, I think that if I'd done it out of a heavy fabric, it would have worked just as well. But honestly, I wanted something that would be more usable just for every day for throwing on while, you know, a room might be a little bit chilly or something. And it's cute, you know, very dropped shoulders, plenty of room to move around. I went up one size when I cut this out. I don't think that I needed to, you know, it doesn't hurt anything. I think it made my sleeve like a half inch longer than I normally would wear it, but that's okay. And rolling them up because of the lining in there and everything, it makes a cute little rolled up cuff. So anyway, there you go. It is not quilted. That initially, like I said, I was thinking it was going to be a quilted pattern, but it's not, but that's okay. There's a lot of other things we can quilt. So anyhow, hope you liked it and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me as 
sin is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.